So early in the chapter, we've already talked about the reduction of ketones and aldehydes to form alcohols. Well, now we're going to talk about the oxidation of alcohols to form ketones and aldehydes, so the exact opposite. Uh, before we worry about what reagent we use and stuff, uh, I just want to point out a couple things about oxidation reactions here. We're going to focus on the carbon with the hydroxyl groups. In a primary alcohol, that carbon has two hydrogens. In a secondary alcohol, that carbon has one hydrogen. And in the tertiary alcohol, he does not have any hydrogens. So and what we're going to do is sequentially replace a bond to one of those hydrogens with another bond to oxygen. So if we look in the primary alcohols case, the first thing that's going to happen is we're going to form a double bond to oxygen. And now we've got two bonds to oxygen to only one bond to hydrogen, whereas we'd started with two bonds to hydrogens and only one bond to an oxygen from this carbon. So, but because this carbon still has an, a bond to a hydrogen, we can go one step further. That's a possibility. So, but since oxygen only makes two bonds, we actually have to add another oxygen into the mix and we form a carboxylic acid here. So uh, after one step of oxidation for that primary alcohol, we form an aldehyde. But if we go through a second step of oxidation, we can turn it into a carboxylic acid. So, and this is a big deal because we have a reagent for either case. If I want my primary alcohol to turn into carboxylic acid, two steps of oxidation, I can do that. If I want it to only convert to an aldehyde, I have a different reagent and I can do that. So if we take a look at the secondary alcohol now, the carbon with the hydroxyl group only has one hydrogen, and so only one step of oxidation is even possible. Once we've converted this to a ketone, increased the number of bonds to oxygens by one, decreased the number of bonds to hydrogen by one, but now we've got a ketone, and our central carbon here no longer has any hydrogens, and no more oxidation is possible. That secondary alcohol is completely oxidized by any normal means. Uh, if we look down here at the tertiary alcohol, because the carbon with the hydroxyl group actually doesn't have any hydrogens, any normal oxidation is not possible, so no reaction here. So only primary al uh, alcohols and secondary alcohols are things we got to worry about. Tertiary alcohols will not be oxidized by any of the reagents you guys are going to learn about. So just simply no reaction. Uh, so this is kind of generally the way it works. Primary alcohols can be oxidized one step or two. So in secondary alcohols, uh, only one step is possible. And Based on what kind of reagents we have, we can kind of differentiate what's going to happen. Let's take a deeper look. So we have two major oxidizing agents we're going to take a look at. And, and technically, there's a third one that some classes might see called potassium permanganate, but most classes aren't going to learn that one, and I'm not going to cover it. Um, but if you do have potassium permanganate, it does the same thing as chromic acid, FYI. Uh, but the first one we will look at is indeed chromic acid. Now, chromic acid, we think, looks like H2CrO4. And you can make it one of a couple of different ways. You can add sodium or potassium dichromate with sulfuric acid, or just really H3O+. Plus. Uh, or you can take chromium trioxide and mix it with uh, H3O+, plus like H2SO4 again as well. Um, any, either of those two methods forms what we think is H2CrO4 chromic acid. And the reason I've got it in orange here is chromic acid is orange. And chromic acid being an oxidizing agent is going to cause the alcohol to get oxidized, but it itself is going to get reduced. And when it goes, gets reduced, it goes from orange to green. So it's going from the plus 6 oxidation state down to the plus 3 oxidation state. Uh, and in the plus 6 it's orange, in the plus 3 it's green. Uh, but this is a great test. If you think you have an alcohol, uh, if you add chromic acid to it and the solution turns green, oh great, you probably have a primary or secondary alcohol. If it doesn't, well then you don't have a primary or secondary alcohol. Uh, you might have a tertiary alcohol if you know you for sure you have an alcohol, but it's not going to be primary or secondary. So that's kind of the, the chromic acid test for primary and secondary alcohols. Turns out, we'll find out in a second, it also gives a positive test for aldehydes, so it's something you can't quite completely rule out. Um, but in this case, I'll use the most common way of writing it, that's sodium dichromate with sulfuric acid. So, and it turns out this is your strong oxidizing agent. And for a primary alcohol, you can't stop at one step. It will completely oxidize the primary alcohol, both steps of oxidation, all the way to the carboxylic acid. It does not stop at the aldehyde. Uh, but what that implies, though, it actually con originally converts the primary alcohol into an aldehyde, but then keeps reacting with it, converting it to a carboxylic acid. You can't stop it in the middle. What that implies, though, is that if you happen to have an aldehyde rather than an alcohol, it would also, chromic acid in this case, convert it to a carboxylic acid as well. So primary alcohol, chromic acid all the way to a carboxylic acid. For a secondary alcohol, it turns out all the way is just simply to a ketone. Just one step of oxidation is possible, if you recall. So chromic acid will oxidize your primary and secondary alcohols all the way. For a primary alcohol, that means a carboxylic acid. For a secondary alcohol, that means a ketone. Now the second oxidizing agent we're going to present is called PCC. And almost everybody just simply calls it PCC, but that stands for pyridinium chlorochromate. 
Uh, and it turns out if you mix chromium trioxide, CRO3, with some pyridine and some hydrochloric acid, uh, you get this kind of thing going on here. So the pyridine gets protonated, and we call that pyridinium ion now, and the chlorine complex is with the chromium reagent, uh, and that's your chlorochromate. So that's PCC, uh, but most likely you're probably just going to have to recognize it as PCC, uh, although every once in a blue moon somebody writes out CRO3 and pyridine and HCl, and uh, students are like, I have no idea what that is. Well, my apologies, but that's what PCC is. Uh, in this case, PCC is your weaker of the two oxidizing agents, so it's weaker than chromic acid, and it'll oxidize still just primary or secondary alcohols, but it will do both only one step. So, well, for a secondary alcohol, we'll start with the second one first, they're only capable of one step of oxidation, so you get a ketone. And so it turns out for the secondary alcohol, it doesn't matter if you use PCC or chromic acid, they both turn in, it'll, either reagent turns it into a ketone. One step of oxidation is only possible. It's the primary alcohol where you see the difference. So with PCC, again, only oxidizing one step in either case, for a primary alcohol, that means it's gonna stop at the aldehyde. You will not form a carboxylic acid. And the reason it stops at the aldehyde is that PCC doesn't react with aldehydes. And so once you form the aldehyde, you're done. You will not proceed onto the carboxylic acid. So if your goal is to turn a primary alcohol into an aldehyde, PCC is what you have to use. If you want to turn it into a carboxylic acid, chromic acid is what you have to use. There's your big difference. Okay, I want to take a little bit of a look at the chromic acid oxidation mechanism. And I'm not going to go into too much detail here, uh, but I will dive into just a little bit. One thing to note, uh, the majority of classes I've been around did not need to know this mechanism, so I'm just kind of covering my bases just in case. Uh, so it turns out first step, though, is we are going to undergo a nucleophilic attack here on the chromium atom, kicking the electrons up to an oxygen. So from our, in this case, I'm using a secondary alcohol. So as a result, this oxygen is now going to be bonded to the chromium. So a couple things are going to happen here. Uh, and this is where I'm going to kind of cheat just a little bit. Um, it turns out that, uh, oh, I lost an H, by the way. So, and here's where I'm going to cheat. So it turns out that this H is going to get deprotonated. So, and it turns out this OH is going to get protonated and become a water and become a good leaving group. And I'm just going to kind of skip that a little bit. So in this case, this auction no longer has an H. And this auction now has two. And like I said, this is where I'm getting a little bit lazy. So and some people will do this and kind of represent this like this. They'll put plus H plus and minus H plus, which means in one place we got protonated, in another place we got deprotonated. And that's where I'm kind of skipping some steps. So and then in this case, now these electrons are going to come back down and kick off the water, which is now a good leaving group. Oh, I lost that double bond to oxygen right there. Cool, and this thing's called a chromate ester. So, and in this case now, a water molecule from your solution, we'll draw one of those in. It's just gonna come in and act as a base. So we're gonna come in and pull that hydrogen off, deprotonating that. It's gonna free up those electrons to form a double bond to the oxygen there, and these bond breaks and the electrons go to the chromium. So, and that takes you to your ketone here. I mean, you're also gonna form an H3O plus molecule and you're gonna form this level of chromium reagent. But the big thing is that we just formed our ketone. So this last step here is uh, very analogous to E2 elimination. You deprotonate, form the pi bond and kick off a leaving group all in the same step, a big concerted mechanism. So, uh, but a lot of students really struggle with this mechanism when they're responsible for it. So I really wanted to go through that last step in particular. This is especially the tricky one.